Feminists want to uproot and destroy every single social tradition that's been practiced by men and women since the beginning of time. The idea of a wife cooking dinner while her husband fixes the car out in the garage is seen as old-fashioned and oppressive. A woman sewing a button back on her husband's shirt after he comes home from work at the office or the factory and sits on the couch watching TV to relax for a bit isn't seen as the two sexes working in harmony with each other, but instead is just more oppression from the patriarchy. How dare a woman be expected to know how to sew just like her mom and grandma and all women in her family tree going back to the beginning of modern civilization. Even the tradition of men asking women to marry them is under attack as the Marxists are trying to reverse the roles and are encouraging women to do the proposing. Well, that is when they're not trying to undermine the entire institution of marriage altogether, I suppose. Some feminist men are actually taking their wives' last names. <laughs> As you would expect, a recent study shows that the Supposed men who do this are extremely feminine, and it would be fair to ask if they're even men at all. Because of modern feminism, stay-at-home moms are now frowned upon, and women are pressured to get back to work right after giving birth and let some daycare center or state-run school raise their kids. Forbes magazine noted that the rate of millennial women choosing to become stay-at-home moms is on the rise and said that bad work-life balance and lack of flexibility may be to blame making it sound like being a stay-at-home mom is a bad thing and that outside factors are forcing women into such a horrible situation. Feminists get upset when a man has to explain something to a woman that she doesn't know anything about or when a man corrects them when they're spouting nonsense because this makes feminists feel inferior since they want to dominate men in all things. They call it mansplaining, short for a man explaining, and it's seen as condescending and more evidence of the sinister patriarchy in action. Telling a woman something about cars, tools, or science is now deemed a microaggression. Apparently, we're just supposed to let them live in bliss with their ignorance ignorance when they're wrong about something or simply don't know about a particular topic. Since many women specialize in things like applying makeup, doing their hair, and fashion, while men tend to be more knowledgeable in practical areas of life, like knowing how to fix cars or stop a leaky faucet, feminists get triggered when they're faced with the obvious fact that their area of expertise has left them largely inexperienced in other important fields. But one of their main slogans is, the future is female, showing that they don't want equality, they want dominance. Today's feminists are mostly women who struggle to fit in with society, and instead of taming their wild ideas, or accepting the laws of nature, they try to fight them. It's like an apple tree being upset that it produces apples and instead wanting to grow oranges. But that's not what you were designed to do and no amount of complaining about it is gonna change that. Just learn to be happy with how God created you or your life will forever be in disharmony and out of balance. Most feminists are bitter about life since most of them were raised by a single mother. They didn't experience what a normal life with a mother and a father working together to raise a family should be. Their entire view of the world has been skewed and they've been emotionally scarred without even knowing it. And because of their constant complaining and distorted view of the world, many are unable to find stable relationships, which only fuels their frustration. Those who do land a husband instead of just getting knocked up and being a single mom themselves, often have their marriage end in divorce, or the poor husband puts up with them out of fear that she'll take half his income for the rest of his life through hyperinflated child support payments and alimony. Sadly, many men married to feminists often resort to alcoholism, trying to cope with the hell on earth they've been trapped in, hoping to drink away their problems by numbing themselves to the reality of who they're married to and what their life has become. Like an old and outdated VHS recorder, feminism has outlived its usefulness. At one time, it had noble and valid goals, but now feminists find themselves being an army without a war. And instead of disbanding and finding other productive things to do with their time and energy, they engage in imagining new enemies, picking pointless fights and perpetuating perversions, which only prevent them from facing what their real problems actually are. One of the primary problems in America today are unwed mothers. I'm sorry to say it, but you know that I don't sugarcoat anything. Today, over half of all births in America are by women who aren't married. When the number of unwed mothers reached more than 50% in 2012, the feminist blog Jezebel celebrated the milestone with a headline reading, the increase in single moms is actually a good thing because that means fewer women relying on men economically, meaning they turn to the government for assistance and welfare. And feminists view more single moms as a sign of female empowerment. 
The writer was upset that experts and ordinary people were concerned about the growing trend since children born out of wedlock face greater social and economic obstacles than their peers born into nuclear families normal families. Liberals never want to hear about the effects of their disastrous decisions, but there's one thing that they like more than single mothers, and that's women who never become mothers at all. A report from CNBC declared that, quote, your friends may tell you having kids has made them happier. They're probably lying. It went on to say that research shows that parenthood leads to a happiness gap and claimed that the pleasures of parenthood are outweighed by all the extra responsibilities, housework, and expenses. The writer is most likely a middle-aged cat lady trying to justify her own misery and in denial about her poor decisions when she was younger, which condemned her to a life of watching Netflix alone on the weekends and feeding her cat instead of having dinner with a spouse. Many feminists want you to be alone too, and they want you to depend on the government in emergencies, to need celebrities to entertain you instead of finding joy in teaching your kids how to play catch or bake cookies. To feminists, it's not just men who are the root of all evil in the world, but more specifically, it's the social structure itself, which of course, they say was carefully constructed by men. One popular feminist website explains, quote, patriarchy perpetuates oppressive and limiting gender roles, the gender binary, transphobia and cis sexism, sexual assault, the political and economic subordination of women, and so much more. And it is of the utmost importance that we prioritize dismantling the patriarchy in our intimate lives, as well as in a larger systemic sphere. Let me explain this liberal nonsense to you. In other words, the patriarchy is the social structure of society, which developed the way where men tend to be in positions of power and authority, and women tend to be in roles involving nurturing and caring. Kind of like how female animals stay in the den with their newborn young while the males go out and get food to bring back to the family. Males and females of all species have different roles in terms of gathering food and taking care of their young, but feminists aren't happy with these differences. As you know, they're never happy about anything. <laughs> CNN published a report that claims guns don't kill people, patriarchy kills people, and went on to say that the patriarchy is a social system that rewards males with power for being violent and oppressive. So why are we continually surprised when a man takes up arms and commits mass murder? Actually, statistically, boys who grow up in fatherless homes tend to take up arms and commit mass murder. In fact, 26 of the 27 deadliest mass shootings were committed by men or teenage boys who grew up without a father. That's why in Chicago's South Side every weekend during the summer, there are dozens of shootings and Chicago is the murder capital of America. It's not the patriarchy, which is spawning those who commit gun violence, it's the collapse of the patriarchy. If you like my serious monologues like this, then you'll love reading my books. So order Liberalism Find a Cure, which isn't just an awesome t-shirt you should order from my online store at markdice.com, but also a very serious book that I wrote that details the liberal agenda and what it's doing to our society. So order it in paperback from amazon.com or download the ebook from Kindle, iBooks, Nook, or Google Play. And of course, there's a link to the Amazon listing in the description below. So click it and head on over there and check it out.